Aloha. What's going on, YouTube? This is yours truly, 808 Moto Lifestyles, coming at you live and direct with my latest moto vlog. Although I'm not on two wheels today, I uh, did want to go over a few things that I get asked about here and there. Um, primarily, like what am I using when I uh, moto vlog or what I'm, when I'm recording. Uh, so, without any further ado, this video is long overdue, so here we go. So, one of the first cameras that I wanted to tell you guys about is the GoPro Hero Session 5. Uh, this is a great camera. Um, it's a small format. It shoots in 4K, so don't, don't let the small size fool you. Um, it's a great little camera, and I use it primarily for what I consider B-roll. For those of you that shoot video, you already know what your B-roll is. So you normally have a primary camera and a secondary camera. So this is a, more of a secondary camera. So I use this to get different aspects and different views uh, as opposed to my main camera that's attached to my helmet, which is in a POV kind of a uh, position. So basically what I see, the camera sees, and eventually is what I, uh, what you guys see on the videos that I post. So that being said, I use this the face forward, uh, give myself a different perspective. I may have it on a, uh, swivel to get different angles of things that I'm seeing while I'm riding. You'll see some people uh, with cameras pointing down at their exhaust. All of those are what you would can kind of consider B-roll kind of cameras. The only drawback, depending on what you're using it for, I would say for this kind of camera, for this size, is um, the battery. The battery length uh, may be an issue, again, depending on what you're using it for, but uh, fellow motor vlogger, Life on Two Wheels, has put me on to this battery pack for this camera specifically. So it's really simple. Just open the door here and then boom. These two go together like peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter so jelly this has allowed me to record jelly. pretty much uh, an entire day here and there um, as needed with this battery pack. Uh, it does add a little bit to the uh, form factor size of it, but it's still a great small compact uh, option. And it comes with a case uh, with your standard GoPro uh, uh, adapters to be mounted. So GoPro Hero Session 5 is my first uh, B-roll camera. Uh, moving into one of my either primary or secondary cameras now is my GoPro Hero 5. Uh, I still have it. It still works perfectly. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, as they say, right? So this is a good camera to be used as a primary and or secondary camera. Uh, I have different locations throughout my bike that I like to place my cameras at, and just having two extra cameras uh, gives me a lot of things, a lot of creative ideas and a lot of uh, play with what and how I want to use and shoot with the videos and the cameras itself, yeah. Which brings me to what I'm using right now that's my primary camera, which is the uh, GoPro Hero 7 Black. Uh, had a little bit of trial and error and a little bit of pain with this camera as this is the third one that I had. Uh, the first two that I bought had issues and I had to send them back uh, to GoPro. Um, it wasn't too too bad of a process to get a new camera, but I will say this. Uh, these cameras aren't necessarily cheap. They're not super expensive, but they're not cheap by any means. Um, and oftentimes when you're shooting photography and or video, uh, they're one-offs. Basically, you only get one chance to get it right. I mean, you may see something or you may be able to redo something, but it's never going to be duplicated. So that said, these cameras really do have to be... Uh, they need, to, they need to do what they say they're going to do 100% of the time when they're supposed to do it. I know that's impossible. It's a man-made. Everything may have an issue or fail eventually, but um, that's why it's important to make sure you're checking your gear to make sure you're doing a test run with it, make sure the batteries are charged up, uh, make sure all of your settings are where you need it. Uh, for me, I go into the GoPro app and I set pretty much uh, all of my stuff to flat. That way I get the most control over it when I'm going into my editing. I don't like the camera to do any of the guesswork or make the decisions for me because it just makes it that much harder when you're in post and trying to edit. So I pretty much shoot everything on a flat uh, surface, uh, flat curve um, in the uh, GoPro app. And actually you can use uh, the GoPro app for all of your cameras. I use them for all three of mine. Um, so it's pretty simple. Uh, they lock in and they save your settings, so uh, why not? Um, if you're not familiar with that, I will say just experiment with it, uh, and I think you'll find eventually you'll have a better video and uh, a better product at the end of the day when you 
are in control of, you know, the contrast and, you know, the white balance and things of that nature. Um, so check it out. Um, so those are the things that I use right now. And this actually, when I thought about doing this video, I said, like I said, it's long overdue for me. Uh, I also wanted to like talk about the eight a little bit. And luckily for me, uh, another fellow moto vlogger and friend of mine, uh, OIF vet two times, uh, was kind enough to allow me to use this, uh, GoPro hero eight black. Um, of course, if you're looking at the two, uh, there is a different uh, difference in the uh, size um, all the way around. The 8 is just a bigger camera. Um, also, the note is the lens on the 7 in previous versions, uh, the, the 6 and the uh, 5 at least. Um, you can change the lens on these um, if need be. The 8 is all encompassing. It doesn't come with an exterior shell and you won't be able to change the glass should something happen. So if you got an 8, um, you definitely want to go out there and just spend a couple dollars and get you a screen protector that may help you uh, should a rock or something hit the, hit the screen. Uh, it may just save your camera. It may save your camera's glass. Um, that said, it doesn't come with an exterior shell. Um, so it does have the feet built into, which I think is pretty neat. It's kind of cool, actually. Uh, my only thing with this is uh, I would definitely keep an eye on that over time, uh, especially if you ride in different elements or using the camera in different elements, water, heat, sun, those things of that nature. Because, I mean, anything with a joint, you know what I mean? You don't want to be losing a uh, $400 camera, three $400 camera um, <laughs> due to something snapping off or whatever. Um, it's just a good practice, even in, if you use them on a helmet, you definitely want to check because the last thing you want is your expensive camera to not only come off your helmet, but you don't want to run the risk of it hitting or injuring someone else that's either riding with you or another motorist that's on the road. Which brings me to my next point. Uh, what I use this for motor vlogging? And the question, the answer to that is simply no, I wouldn't. Um, you got to understand how I motor vlog and how others motor vlog may be a little bit different. Um, some people, they shoot nothing but video when they're out riding and they do a voice overlay when they get back into the editing uh, phase of their video. Uh, as for me, I narrate and as, I'm, as I'm riding. So in order to do that, you have to have the GoPro dongle. It's a $50 little piece, which is ridiculous all in itself. But nonetheless, it is what it is. It's a proprietary piece of equipment from GoPro. So you have to have this dongle in order to uh, feed a microphone into your, uh, your GoPro, your camera. That said, so what I use is, and these are pretty relatively cheap. Um, these are on, uh, I got these from Amazon. Um, I don't have an affiliate program, but if you type in Artman, A-R-T-M-A-N, you, sh you should be able to find these. So basically, and I have two of these, one for my five and one for my seven. And, you know, just put the camera in there just like that. It comes with a, uh, a backing. It's also plastic, so it's lightweight, but it's secure at the same time. That snaps in. It's not going anywhere. It's solid. You don't even, it's, it's not even any rattling. I mean, it's a perfect form factor fit, yeah? So that brings me back to the dongle. Uh, the dongle slides in the bottom of this here, just like that. And actually, that's backwards. So what you want to do is this. So this part right here. So on the side, the only thing is when you use this uh, case, you have to remove the door on your GoPro um, just so you'll be able to access that port. So basically what you want to do is feed one end of the uh, cable, your USB part through, and it's just like that. And then you roll this up in here and plug it into the USB side of the camera. And then once I attach this to my helmet as such, I run my microphone jack right into that. And that allows me to use external audio while I'm modal vlogging. So why wouldn't I use the eight? Well, let's see. I'm willing to, you know, accept the risk of the slight risk of the weather elements should it start raining a little bit down the road or you know debris maybe flying around uh, I got my USC, uh, USB C port which is occupied by this cable and then I got 
basically a power port right there. So that's not too bad. Here's the difference with the eight, yeah? To do the same with the eight, first you gotta find, I don't know if they make anything. I'm pretty sure they do or they will, or you can, I'm sure it can be done. Uh, so this is exposed here. This is also exposing your battery completely as well as your SD card. So you have all components of the internal parts of this camera exposed. All just to feed an audio microphone, uh, the microphone dongle into the camera to be able to um, be able to have commentary over your video while you're using it. Um, that that's a bit much for me. Like I said, the other cameras, the five and the seven, yeah, it's a very small factor than having a whole side of the camera wide open to and exposed to the elements and things of that nature. So that's a no go for me. <laughs> Um, so that's why I wouldn't use it to vlog, but um, to each their own. And, and another reason is the 7 and the 8, if you look at the specs, um, they're not, it's not that significant of a jump for me to say, oh, I got to have that 8. It does X, Y, Z. So, yeah, I want that camera. Ah, I'll stick to the 7. Like I said, um, I got all the little things that I need to make it work for me, as well as the five. Um, I've already invested in these systems. These, like I said, this camera is bigger, the eight is bigger than the previous edition, so a lot of things won't work. So you have to restart all over in, in purchasing gear that uh, basically accommodates the, uh, the camera, the new GoPro 8. Um, the battery is even a little bit different. Um, I'm told you can use a previous edition battery, but you're gonna lose some functionality in the camera itself. That's crazy. I mean, why do that? If you're, if you're going to take away some of the functionality, it's a battery. It's a source of power. It shouldn't come down to, oh, you want to use an older battery. We're going to penalize you by you not being able to do X, Y, Z. That's kind of crazy. Kind of makes no sense to me. But anyway, my audio. I use the uh, Purple Panda. <laughs> yeah, it sounds funny, but this is the microphone that I actually use uh, when I'm riding that's, that I have wired in and through my helmet. Um, I've had people comment on the on the quality of the audio, and I have a pretty loud exhaust. Uh, you may or may not understand how loud it is via the videos, as I you know I turn I, I tend to you know work on the volume man and in post to make sure it's not too hot, too loud. Yeah, but my exhaust is pretty loud, but <laughs> really handles really well external noises, even when my visor is up. Um, I know I've been seeing a lot of them on sale on, online as a recent. Um, I think I paid maybe 45, 40 something bucks for it at the time. So what I'm basically getting at is you can definitely get it cheaper now. So Purple Panda is really good. I uh, wish I knew his name, but it's been over a year. I actually seen it on another Moto Vloggers page. So if I find this name and the one that recommended the Purple Panda, I will definitely add that to this video um, as a thank you because it actually has been super solid. It's worked out great for me. Um, so that's what I use. I use a combination of anywhere from one to three cameras at a time, uh, different angles, different perspectives. Um, and that's what I use for my audio, my Purple Panda. Uh, so, you know, I'm just out here having fun, moto vlogging and just, you know, living the dream, yeah. So hopefully that answer some of the questions that I've gotten from some of uh, my fellow motor vloggers here as well as some that have hit me up online. So give it a try, shop around. Um, I know Amazon is, uh, is the king of online, but there's other places out there to shop. Um, but I probably will say Amazon has been the number one source of uh, things that I've found that I need to work with my motor vlogging setup. Uh, aside for that, um, I use different editors. I, I, I get that question a lot. So if you're on an iOS device, uh, iPad and or iPhone, um, I recommend LumaFusion. Again, nobody's endorsing me or paying me for anything. Ha, <laughs> right, right. Uh, I wish, but they're not. Uh, LumaFusion is, is a pretty awesome program for uh, you iOS users out there. Um, you can edit on the go, you can keep it moving. And I mean, it's a super powerful program. I know at the time of my purchase, it was only like 20 bucks, so very much well worth it. Um, a lot of people use uh, Windows Movie Maker or iMovie. 
perfectly fine. Use what works for you and that's free. Um, but if you're looking at maybe elevating or stepping your game up on the editing side, uh, that would be a good reasonable step because it's only 20 bucks. Um, aside from that, uh, I use that when I'm like super mobile and on the go, meaning I'm moving around with my iPad and my cameras or whatever. Um, but when I'm back at Headquarters Central, I've been using as of late and learning because it's a super powerful program. It's a little bit intimidating and overwhelming at times is Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, it, it's nothing that it really can't do. It's just about learning what it can do and how to do it as for the editing workflow. So those are the, pretty much the primary editors I'm using and as well as the uh, whole Adobe suite. Um, Adobe uh, Rush, CC, all of those things are pretty much good to go as far as on the go editors and mobile editing. So that's what I'm using. That's what I'm doing right now. Um, stay tuned. I've been working on the videos and like I said, getting the edits a little bit better and just getting things out in a more timely manner. But we know how that goes. Uh, there's this thing called life and sometimes it refuses to wait <laughs> for what we want to do and how we want to do things. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, I hope to see you guys in the near future. Uh, there's some events coming up, so be sure to go out there in, the, in your community if you're an 808 and check those out. Again, I'm always looking for cool spots to go shoot video, photo, food. Um, so, so if you know of any, drop them in the comments. Uh, I'd appreciate it. I'll go check them out. And if I do go check out one of your recommendations, I'll be sure to shout you out on the next video. And that said, I'm gonna get up out of here. Uh, appreciate it. So please uh, like, uh, subscribe, and share. Mahalo and aloha.